Hello, welcome back to Build. Guess who I corralled? Two of my good friends, Jonathan and Duncan, and they're here to talk about something very interesting. Say hello to everyone. Hello, folks. Hello. Okay. All right, so you, you two are working on one of the most interesting projects I've ever heard, which is using, actually using AI to solve a real world problem around sustainability. That is fantastic. And specifically around coastal resilience. Can you tell everyone about this? Yeah, I'd love to, Donna. Yeah. So we've, uh, coastal resilience isn't just important to you, it's not important to me, it's important yes. to the world, right? right? And uh, flooding, you know, sea level rise, all are increasing the um, you know, hazards that people are seeing uh, uh, globally. And what we've done at Stantec is we've partnered with AltML and Microsoft to build an AI system to see if we can use the same approach that we've done with Flash and Riverine uh, flooding we can take that same approach, develop a coastal AI model that can better predict AI, or sorry, better predict flooding, flood extents, and flood probability uh, throughout the world and roll that into our, our existing service offerings. Okay, that is fascinating because you're taking a bunch of data you've had for how many years? Long time. Well, I mean, we, people have been running physics-based yeah. coastal models yeah. for, for decades, yeah. right? And so we're using that engineering experience, yeah. right? The, kind of the domain experience, right, of mm -hmm. hydraulic modeling and, and coastal engineering and seeing if we can take that same experience and put it into an, an artificial intelligence. Yeah, so you're building your own model from all this data that's been collected for a long time. Yep. And what, are, what, are, what have you found AI to actually do pretty well in this case? Well, I mean, one of the reasons why we want to use AI yeah. versus those physics-based yeah. models is just how much faster you can, you can get that result. Yeah. Right? That's really the big benefit to it. The other one is, and we're hoping, we, we don't know this yet because we're still in the development process, but we're hoping that's going to be kind of generally applicable, right? We want to be able yeah. to take the same model that we build and using data, say, in the southern U.S. or other areas, and now apply it globally, uh, just as what we did with our, our flash and riverine flooding models where we found that we could and create a model that could just be generally applied. Right. So AI has, uh, has a lot of benefits. I mean, the speed is the big one, the cost is so much lower to run it versus say running the, the conventional ad circ models. Yeah. And so if we can do that, you know, it really just opens up access, right, to everyone to be able to use this model for lots of different services. Uh, yeah. Smaller communities that just wouldn't have, don't have access to supercomputers, so they can't run, uh, you know, the, the classic physics-based right. models, right, like ad circ and swim and others. Yeah, and, and I, I think the, the, the interesting thing that we're doing is the applicability of what we've created here is, it's not just about uh, modeling for uh, assessment, right? Like there's yeah. a there's a real time element to what we're doing mm -hmm. here, um, and and to the general applicability pieces, one of the things we're trying to 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 create here is um, dem democratizing the access to the to the capability, right? Yes. And so we're taking the new format, um, uh, sorry, the new technology uh, that's available now, you know, using um, old. Uh, and well-established uh, models, but the tech has, has progressed so much that uh, we're able to run these things much faster. So we're, we're really working on access um, to the tooling. We're working on timely access as well, which is critically important. Yes. And uh, driving down that cost as well. Okay, so the real-time angle is really interesting, right? That is a cool thing to invent, right? Real-time access. Um, so tell me a little bit more about that. How does this work? So... You know, let's talk tech, tech for a little bit here. Yeah. So, um, obviously, you know, the vast majority of what we've built here is, is based on the Azure platform, yes. right? And so we're using yeah. uh, a, a large chunk of the Azure toolbox, mm -hmm. everything from DevOps all the way through to Data Factory. Mm. Uh, we're using uh, pipelines. Yes. Uh, we're using MLflow for mm -hmm. things like uh, recording uh, and testing out uh, some of our experiments, right? So we have, right. we have to have provability and reproducibility in the models. Yes. Um, and so there's a huge uh, investment in the, the Azure platform to get us uh, the functionality that we're after. We're using GPU and clusters yeah. uh, for, for speed and for processing. Uh, and then at the heart of it, we're using Databricks for, for data processing and transformation. Okay, what I love about this is you're using the full stack. You're using everything that is available to solve this problem and you're able to identify how to put them together. That's right. It's, right. it's the applied AI yes. part that, that we are particularly passionate about at AlterML. Yeah. Uh, and so we're using 
uh, regression analysis. Yeah. We're using uh, time series data and skill yeah. sets. Uh, we're using uh, computer vision, yes. uh, all in combination so that we can get this real time uh, speed and access to the tools, which we haven't been able to do before. Right. And, you know, as Jonathan said, historically, a, a model would take 20 minutes to run yes. on a 2000 core supercomputer. Yes. We're now able to run these things near real time, which is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so what does this mean for users? How can they benefit from this? Because not everyone is going to be able to train these models because they don't have technical folks such as yourself in most companies. Right. Right. Well, I think that's why we're that's why we're doing this. That's why we're building yeah. this. You know, we're building this model and and so that it is accessible, so that um, it can be included in the services that Stantec is offering. And it creates a lot of you know, interesting derivatives, things that we can do now that uh, just wouldn't be possible with the conventional physics pr approach because it takes so long to run those models. Right. You talk about real time, yeah. you know, Duncan mentioned real time, and you know, real time means a lot of different things to a lot of people, right? But it, when, when we think about it in terms of flood predictor and, and coastal modeling, mm -hmm. the real time nature allows us to do things like emergency management logistics operations, right. right? So you can do what if scenarios and you can see the effect of the storm coming as that forecast is being updated and our our expectation of this effort is that it'll be fast enough and at a low enough cost that you can you can watch that storm come in you can see what that flood effect is going to be you can see what the impact is going to be on your critical infrastructure access to um, uh, emergency management services like hospitals see how it's going to be impacted so that you can you know during that storm you can support whatever logistics that you need to get in place right in addition you know, but during the storm is certainly one thing, but there's lots of other services around before the storm, yes. right? Before the storm hits, after the storm hits. So before facilitating that planning cycle, right? So that you uh, you can run it, you can run more models faster and see the impact. And then after, how do you mitigate these yeah. effects? These are all services that are going to be enabled as we kind of take the the model that that AI nucleus and we wrap the the product itself around it. Right. And then make it available, you know, as a data product. If people just want to consume that model, then by all means, or they can do so through, uh, you know, the products that Stantec is developing. And you know, let's talk about the model for a few minutes here yeah. because th this is pretty complex stuff. Yeah. Uh, really complex stuff, actually. Yes. Um, and and so if you think about some of the the things that we're trying to do in a supercomputer model versus you know an AI driven yes. model here, right? When you're tracking a storm in this particular context, what we're looking at is a whole bunch of things like how high is the water going to be? How far is it going to travel inland, for yes. example? And the what if analysis is very important because then you have to overlay things like, well, what if the velocity of, this, of the wind is you know, not where we expected it to be? Uh, or what if the, the, the size of the storm suddenly grows much larger than right. we expected? And all of these, these variables and all of these inputs affect, materially affect, uh, the outcome of what the flooding prediction looks like. And so, you know, as Jonathan said, this, this ability now to do very extensive what-if analysis mm -hmm. in real time mm -hmm. uh, or near real time in emergency response scenarios is pretty powerful. Yes. You know what's interesting about this whole thing? It's so applicable to all these other industries as well. Right. Natural disaster. Yeah. Like we, we see this all the time where how can you predict the impact of this? We know a natural disaster is coming. What will the impact of it be just given decades and decades and decades of data? Right. So, yeah. yeah. So I can see this being used for all kinds of sustainability things. Right. And just figuring out, like, how do you do how do you allocate resources? How do you allocate people to be in certain places? That's right. And, That's exactly right. And a lot of these things are causal. Right. One environmental thing causes this other environmental thing, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And I mean, yeah. if you look at the spin off stuff as well, right, you know, yeah. as, as Jonathan was alluding to, you look at things like how do you tie in, you know, with the mitigation piece of, right. the, you know, so let's do an analysis. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the mitigation of that analysis. That extends into things like insurance. Right. right? And That's so right. The, the cost to develop something right. becomes uh, much clearer in terms of the risk that you're, you're assuming I love it. Uh, when you run these things. So it's pretty cool. Applied AI, do it. Not just boring AI, applied <laughs> AI like these two. <laughs> so you've right. got homework for everyone. What is that? What is the call to action? Well, I mean, we've been working on this science for about four years now, uh -huh. developing and integrating coastal with flood predictor, with uh, you know, with riverine flooding, and the call to action is to you know to 
learn more on aka.ms slash flood predictor okay. and to, to see how you can use it and build it into your, your systems, right? And I love it. Make it love available it. to your, your people. Okay. Go try it. aka.ms slash flood predictor. Do the thing. Thank you.